got Sarah here from Nebraska. Um, Emmanuel and Juan, they just met here. They're not related at all. Sweet. New York. We've got Billy Boy here. Billy is from Connecticut. Ah, welcome, you guys. I had to break the, the jacket back out. This is the guy right oh, here. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's amazing. The artiste. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so welcome. much. It's like, it's such a, like, vortex of magic, and I so have enjoyed connecting with each and every one of you. Who wants to, Sarah, maybe you want to start with a little bit about sharing oh, your experience? Oh, okay, sure. Ladies first. Oh, of course. All week, right? I've been all exploring all week. <laughs> um, yeah, well, the experience overall has just been fantastic and transformational for me, and I know I could speak, I think, for all of us, too, how phenomenal it's been. Um, not only have I seen the change in myself, but I've been able to see the change in all these guys, which has been just as rewarding to me. Mm. Um, I think my biggest thing, my overall thought that I've had reoccurring all week was tied in a lot with kind of what you were saying, Matt, mm. was we all have the same story. Of all the people that I've met, um, not only these guys, but everybody has come through this magical place. Um, we all want the same thing. We all want to give and receive love freely. We want to feel mm. safe. We want to be heard. Mm -hmm. And this place has given me that mm. times a million. So oh. thank you so much for that. Mm. Um, so I genuinely feel like a completely different person. Mm. So I am so, so, so thankful for that. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. So you heard uh, the epic conversation with this alien over here. Yes. Um, <laughs> So I mean, any, I'm single too. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And there we have it, folks. That's manifestation at its finest. All right. <laughs> so your question. <laughs> Get you, down on one knee. What are you doing later? I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing. He's cooking. He's I'm teasing. Okay, here we go. Hi. Hey. Nice to Any see you. Any questions? Um, question. I guess a, a big thing for me yeah. is this week I feel like I'm trapped in this portal, like, and I feel like so much love and positivity around me about going back home mm -hmm. and um, still being able to transpire everything that I have I've learned here. Mm -hmm. There's a, something that's been kind of going all day in my head. So mm -hmm. if you have any words of wisdom for me, I would be grateful for that. Absolutely. Well, my question, my, my first intuition is to ask you a question. And the question is, what is your association with home? When you imagine mm. going home, what emotion comes up? Um, I guess a little bit of fear mm -hmm. would be a big one. Um, I'm kind of nervous to go back into an environment that's not necessarily completely healthy for me. Right. And making those changes little and, by little. And where do you feel that fear in your body if we located it? My tummy. Good. It's anxious. That's good. Sacral chakra. Yeah. It's good. So if we went into the center of that sacral chakra, and if I just asked you, if you went into the center and you ask it, now that you have my attention, mm -hmm. what do you need? And what is the answer that comes to you? Oh. I would say I need to feel security in, at home. And so we ask this. Mm hmm you're the one asking this and, and let it res, uh, respond in whatever way it wants. What do you need from me right now in order to feel secure right now with me? What does it need? Um, it needs to have the confidence in knowing that I have mm. created this feeling already here. Mm. Yeah. Um, that I can do this at home too. Right. And just making sure I'm putting the effort into it. So here's where the insight is. Don't try to conjure confidence. Mm -hmm. Don't assume you require confidence. Bring insecurity, doubt with you. Mm. Mm. Whenever you go back home, you're going to be in an environment that is there to bring up certain feelings within you. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to try to be confident as a way of trying to be bigger than doubt. Yeah. I want you to be the divine feminine, the mother that says, beloved, mm. whether you are confidence, fear, doubt, or shame, I welcome you into my heart and I will carry you home. Mm. Mm. That's beautiful. Thank you. So we are going to transcend by welcoming 
not trying to move beyond. Mm. And what you're going to find by moving in this type of flow is that when you go back home, there are going to be things that you're going to see that are not going to resonate with you. Mm -hmm. There are going to be choices that you're going to make that are, other people may not agree with. Mm -hmm. But the trick and the illusion is going to be two things. One, how do I make a decision? when someone else may not be on board, and how do I make a decision when I am not the confidence I think I need to be? Yeah. We don't make confident decisions. We make decisions mm. and become confident when whatever arises, we bring with us. Mm. So don't wait to be confident, make the choices, and you'll find your confidence later. Mm. That is gangster. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! I love that. Spiritual game. Yes. <laughs> Good. I feel a million times more confident already. So. See, and isn't it funny how we start feeling more confident when we stop requiring us to be that? Because yeah. at that point, we're hiding behind confidence instead of saying confidence is the afterglow of inspired action. And true inspired action is an action you take whether you carry fear with you or not. Mm. So it's, yeah. it's a little different. Mm -hmm. right? Don't wait for that eat, pray, love moment. <laughs> I'm ready. Here we go. This Where's my bike? <laughs> go to Italy. <laughs> you know what you need to do. It doesn't matter how you do it. It doesn't matter whether someone agrees with you or not. All that matters is that it gets done. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I think you're definitely going to land that date after oh. this. Probably. <laughs> I mean, after that, it's probably a date there. Secured, man. Nice. <laughs> Watch the master work. Oh. All right. This manner is mystical. <laughs> <laughs> Tell ya. Mind wow. your mystic manners. Mind your mystic manners. That was funny. <laughs> Shout out, Steven, uh, past guest. <laughs> How you been, man? How's man, I've been awesome. The experience is amazing, mm. magical. I gotta say. It's so I, I came in word honestly. I, to me, this is like the new temple. This is the new club. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is it. This is the place to be at, guys. And we all here for a reason. This is love, and honestly, it's been an amazing week. It's been, I never felt so much love. Not even towards at home, even towards my family. I feel like you guys are my family. You know, I feel at home. I don't even want to leave. I'm hopeful I can get a job here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just amazing. And what you were saying earlier, it was just amazing. I, I, I just want to get into top about what you was speak about earlier. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you, you said that, you know, everything is a gift. Anger, fear, and all that. And, um, mm -hmm. But you saying that, and, like, it opened my mind even more because mm. like last year 2000 uh last year 2000 uh 2018 yeah. my girl gave me a gift and i didn't know it was a gift mm. and the gift that she gave me was she got me so mad that it was on my birthday that that's like the maddest I've ever been in my life yeah the birthday gift a yeah. birthday gift wow. and i didn't know it was a gift right and then Right. She gave me the happiest thing ever, which is this. Yeah. She made this for me. Yeah. She made this happen. Yeah. And it was just like, I didn't realize that she was giving me past above world. Mm -hmm. And she gave me mm -hmm. anger and she gave me the most happiest thing, which mm -hmm. is this. Yeah. And mm -hmm. honestly, it's like, I thought she wasn't the one, but this clarified right here, that is, she is the one. <laughs> She's the one for me, you know? Yes, yes. And I was just so lost in this right here, this present, this temple, what I call it, of magical, is mm -hmm. it confirmed that. It mm -hmm. really confirmed that. Mm -hmm. And like, it's just amazing. It just, what you guys got to offer, you know, I just, I'm speechless, honestly. Mm -hmm. It just, I don't even know what to say anymore. It's I just love it. awesome. I awesome. Love it. Whew. Powerful, powerful. Question from you, Question. or in, you not necessarily have to have one. No, yeah, no, I, I don't. I, honestly, I don't. He answered everything that I wanted. You yeah. know, I, he, he said it all. You know, it's just like it was right there in my face. Just, psh, psh, psh. Oh my god! I'm gonna go home. I might marry this girl tonight. You know, you know, you know, you know? Just, it'd, be, it'd be great. Like, wow, well, like. I gotta say, I don't know, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. Yeah, well, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. If I can, you know, you know, you have a question, if I can just share what's coming to me with you is two things. 
one of your greatest gifts that you can give to this woman that you love is always to make sure on a daily basis one of the best ways to demonstrate how much you are in love with this woman, how much you are there to be her hero, is to give the gift of listening. Mm -hmm. When you listen, you are telling someone that their point of view, their experience is valid and they can feel you are there for them to keep them safe through their experience and their process. Don't fall into the trap of trying to be a prideful man that says, if I can't fix this situation, I pull back and shut down in shame. You don't have to fix a problem, you just have to listen to what wants to be expressed. And the other part of this is taking the time as a man to make sure you're always expressing what you're feeling. When we express what we feel, we don't blame, we don't judge, we say, here's how I'm feeling. And at that point, as a man, you are welcoming your beloved into your heart to meet you in intimacy. So we give the gift of listening, and then when listening is complete, we give the gift of sharing so that you can allow you and your beloved to truly manifest this light between you into physical form. Awesome. I love you, brother. Right, you need to give me more. You know what? You confirmed it now. I think I'm about to call her up today. <laughs> Tell you, but I have to tell you, we're gonna get married, all right? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. I love it, brother. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you. all of y'all guys, honestly. Likewise, brother. Mm -hmm. Ooh, speaking of brothers. <laughs> One. Mm. Yes. Hi, everyone. How you doing? Hey. You got double the love here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> extra, extra love. Uh -huh. um, He's been going to <laughs> 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 um, I, in my, before I came here, my heart was closed. It was, it was, it was closed. I was, I was afraid of love. I was, I was scared, horrified. I'm like, ah, this, you know, don't love me that much, cause you know, like I don't want to love you that much, you know. So I was, I was mm. horrified. But coming here has opened my heart. It's, mm. it, you know, my heart's open right now for all of you guys, and it's mm. open right now. So much gratitude goes around here, you know, and everybody is is thankful for the love the way you appear, each, each one of us, how, how we appear, and no one's judging no one. So I wanna ask Matt a question. Um, a person like me, like, that when love arises and someone's giving me love, but my mind is telling me, oh, I don't know, uh, should mm -hmm. you take that love or, you know? So what would you say to someone like me, like, like that has that thought sometimes that oh, this person's trying to give you love, like open up and take the love. When that thought of distrust arises, you say to your mind, I'm worth the risk. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Can't like say that. any better. <laughs> you, the love you receive from someone may lead to something more stable and long lasting, or it might be just for one moment. But even if someone was only meant to love you for one split second, aren't you worthy of receiving the gift that life is trying to give to you? I like you, am worth the risk. Take a chance on love. Mm -hmm. I love you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. I love you too. You're welcome. Even if you you get hurt, even if yeah, you it's okay. getting hurt, it's it's worth the risk. You got to risk it every time. And if if the universe is is bringing that to you and it's in front of you, it's in your face, you can't shut the door on that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And 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 here's the thing about it. I agree with what you're saying. And so. What we realize is that other people's conduct is a part of their journey. Mm -hmm. Other people's conduct help us to find our journey. Ultimately, if someone is going to betray you mm -hmm. or, or abandon Alternate, you, alternative motive, that is actually their journey. Yep. Your freedom is saying, whatever is done to me, I can love myself through it. Mm -hmm. So we don't give power to the people like, ooh, can I trust this or not trust this? If I feel like opening up, I receive it. And whatever comes to be about that, it's gonna be a gift that I can handle because I'm worth the risk. Yes. Mm. All right, brother? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome, buddy. You look so, mm. <laughs> Do it, baby. <laughs> Do it, baby. <laughs> Billy boy. Billy, Billy, yeah. Billy. Billy, Billy. Um, so first, a, a little about my experience here at the Mystic Manor. Um, I feel like I've met more inspiring people here mm in the last six days than I have in the last year at home. It's just like mm. crazy, you yeah. know? It's so inspiring to me just to like, you know, integrate all this and 
make it part of my life, mm. you know, and just uh, take that home with me. It's, it's amazing. And hearing you speak is just, you know, the icing on the cake, the cherry Thank on you. top. And Thank you. so much of what you said has resonated with me and things I've been working through this past week, you know, like so many things. But the, the one I, I want to focus on that's really relevant to me is mm. what you brought up about how everyone's an artist and yeah. the creative pursuit because mm. I myself am a musician mm. and my creative pursuit is what drives so much in my life and mm. is this huge platform for growth, you know, and it scares the shit out of me all the time. Mm. And, you know, and I, and I keep doing it, you know, because I think a lot of it is kind of counter to things I'm comfortable with, you mm. know, I'm comfortable being analytical and like, mm -hmm. you know, I, all my life I've been rewarded like, you know, yeah, you memorize these things, you take these tests and, and this is, this is what you should do. This mm -hmm. is, you know, and then the, the creative world can be so scary for me, but I think that's why I'm so drawn to it at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I've reached this point recently where I feel creatively a little stagnant, mm. you know, or, or a little, um, I reject things so quickly. I, I try to create and then I'm just, you know, I just, I judge it and I just, you know, it's not good enough or, you know, I, 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 I feel like I set the bar too high to let things develop or, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I don't know if that's a result of, you know, being, being trained, being taught by people. You know, I went, mm -hmm. I went to, to school for music and, you know, was compared myself to other people. Mm -hmm. You know, professors compared me to other people. You're placed with people that, that are around your level. Of course. And I'm, I'm just curious what advice you might have for someone in my position and like, you know, may maybe me as um, sort of an example for a lot of other artists mm -hmm. in this room or in the world who, you know, maybe face a similar struggle. 100%. When it comes to unleashing your creative artistry, as if that's a part of your life, when it's time for you to make music, you're stagnant because there are rules in your mind. Now, a lot of artists don't make enough time for their art to have a space, a safe space where there's no rules. So they live a life where all their life has no rules, which doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So your analytical mind is there to create some boundary and balance to keep you grounded. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. But your creative side needs a space in your life where you shut the doors. And when it's time to be creative, there are absolutely no rules but what wants to come through you. And your only job as a meditation is whatever comes to you, you say yes. Mm. So if you want to unblock your creativity, you have to just start saying yes to what wants to come through you and not have an idea of what it's going to look like, not get your pre-approval of what's going to happen. You have to surrender to it in the same way that when the divine masculine surrenders to the divine feminine, he doesn't know what's going to happen when the merging occurs. It feels like I'm kind of going to die, and I don't know what's about to happen. But your job is to say yes and dissolve into the one you're merging with. Your divine feminine right now is your art. Mm -hmm. So you have to embrace what is embracing you, feel the part of you that is dying and may not make the journey, and you got to dive in and say yes. And when it comes to your creativity, there are absolutely no rules but what is arising and moving through you. What does that feel like when you hear me say that? that this is the first part. OK, first, that, that feels good. But, but it's a little foreign to me. I guess right. it's foreign to me. <laughs> yeah. You know? It will always be foreign to you because creativity, like insight, comes from a dimension in which you have not been trained to exist in. So you're never going to know enough to be comfortable with this. You're just going to have to bring it through and bring it through. I bring through what a transmission of energy. This is part of my art. And when I started doing this teaching, it wasn't until the year seven of my career that I actually started to trust it. It wasn't until year 14 out of the 15 years I've been doing this that I was able to 100% trust it. The one thing that happened, though, is I never stopped performing. I didn't take myself out of this waiting to be perfect, then step forward. Yeah. You have to grow on stage. You have to let your art mature you. So this is not I pull back and I wait till I'm the polished artist, then I come out. Yeah. You have to grow on stage because when you grow through your art, your audience can then see themselves in you. Right. 
-hmm. So don't be perfect. Mm -hmm. Be authentic and relatable. Mm -hmm. You don't need to know anything for that. Yeah. It will always feel foreign. It will feel like you're talking out of your ass. So you're, you're, what's coming <laughs> through you is just, what am I even doing? Because your ego has no role in this. So it, it doubts. It gets intimidated. Your ego is either the one that goes, I say no to that and tries to dominate, or it goes, oh my God, that's beyond me and I'm intimidated. It plays either side of the game. Your job is to say, this is foreign because I'm channeling universal harmonics from a dimension in which I cannot mentally understand or fathom. Your only job is to trust and to confirm the fact that anything coming through you is only from divinity, light, and goodness. To, to, to trust so deeply that your job is to say yes before any option is given with no questions asked whatsoever. Now that when it comes to your art, that's how we play it. When it comes to other areas of life, we do a little thinking. Yeah. So now I'm not saying every area of your life, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. But I'm saying when it comes to your art, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be relatable and you have to allow all the cracks and all the creases to be put into your art. Because if you were already the most perfect expression of your most essential music talent, people would go, wow, he's really good. And then they would yawn and walk away. What people want to see from an artist when I'm on stage, and I'm sharing personal stories about my life and I'm funny and everything, my job as an authentic storyteller is to bleed. So I want you to put yourself into your music and bleed and take everything within you and put it into sound and let the world know what the hell you've survived and bleed creatively and you will let the soul out and you will transform this world with your art. You feel that? Oh yeah. Good. That's where I want you to be. Because I feel what's within you, but there are just too many rules, too many, and, and I get the education, that's, that's wonderful. I've been educated by the universe. I have channeled more healing processes and I've forgotten them all. Because <laughs> in the moment it's whatever I need it to be. Yeah. Right, and you get to a point even in intuition, you learn to be so intuitive where you don't even have to be intuitive. That's the weird. <laughs> I'm intuitive enough where I don't even have to be intuitive sometimes. And, and, and you get so in the flow of your mastery and your skill where you actually transcend every rule you've been taught just to bring through something that no one has even seen or heard. Mm -hmm. That's really great. That reminds me of a quote I've heard and I'm, I, don't yeah. know, I don't know who said it, but right. it's something to the effect of like, Learn everything you can and then get on stage and forget everything. Forget it. Mm -hmm. Forget it. Yeah. Because what people want to see on stage is someone with the courage and audacity to be totally vulnerable about where they're at, to give the audience permission to feel what they're hiding. Mm -hmm. Our job is to get on stage and be honest and to bleed. When I say bleed, it is to just take what's within you and share it in the most honest way. The most honest not self-indulgent, but honest, just here's where I'm at. And what happens is when you start to really do this, you stop watching you. Because that's the thing I feel with you is that you watch you. Mm -hmm. So you have to get so present with your art that you stop watching you. And, and then you stop projecting onto you this imaginary peanut gallery that no one's even thinking. <laughs> oh, I hit this note, oh, no one's thinking this. Right. Right? So you have to get so present with your art that you stop watching you, that you let go to the point where you almost feel like you're about to black out and holy shit, what's about to happen? <laughs> and I might blink, I'll be naked on stage, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> but you have to ride that edge. And be like a rock musician. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, there is a power inside of you that wants to come out. And no matter what genre you want to bring forth, what, what, what music do you do? Just, I'm curious. Like pop, rock, and funk. Dude. Let's do it. <laughs> Dude, I love it. But it's, yeah. and, and in addition, what I'll tell you, what will really help you, and this is very functional, intuitive advice, yeah. do you know what will actually help you get really in tune with your creativity and actually make it easier to perform? What's that? Yoga. Mm -hmm. Because you have to become more embodied. Mm -hmm. Because when you get on stage, it's either your embodiment is dancing out your art for the people, 
or the lack of embodiment is the stage becomes your giant mind that you're performing in. And yoga will get you out of that. It will break the glass ceiling and it will get you into you so that you can bring forth you. Mm. You have to get out of your way so that you can bring you through. Some people say, oh, I, I got out of my own way. That's half of it. You're getting out of your own way so that you can come through. That's the full circle, right? I got out of my way. So what comes through instead? Me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So yoga will get you more in your body, the trust of knowing I just, on a creative level, say yes to bringing it through. You don't worry about what anyone else is doing, you stay true to the art that wants to come through you. The what I do on stage as a spiritual healer, as a transmitter of consciousness, as an awakener, I do things that come through me and I let the world tell me they've never seen what I do before. I let the world tell me the magic I do. I do what satisfies me, I do what I think needs to be done at the level of healing that everyone deserves it. If I'm gonna call myself a healer, I wanna be able to snap my fingers and do something that looks like magic. Because that's what the world deserves. And if I can't perform at that level, why the hell am I on stage? So you have to put yourself into a position where you're here to bring through what no one else can do, and you're just gonna get on stage and be true to that. So whatever you have inside, share on stage. You know, a lot of people that do the work I do or the work that Brandon does or music and art and all the things that we do, a lot of people want to work on themselves and wait and come out once they're perfect. But people can't relate to that. Everyone's trying to be perfect and all they're doing is suppressing the perfect artist that expresses itself through heartache, through pain, through embarrassment, through humiliation. And the true artist is the one that lets people in on the things that we're afraid to show other people. Be that artist. Thank you so much, Matt, for coming and co-creating. Thank you all four of you for coming and co-creating this magic. Thank you. We do have some musical medicine to leave you guys off with. Mm. This is Chakra 8. What's really real? Take it away, guys. Thank you. Till next time, journey well.